Hey all, Scott here. I have hobbies. I'm only human. I like talking harshly about Mario Kart 7, being somewhat critical of Mario Kart 7, negatively speaking about Mario Kart 7, hiking, f***ing despising Mario Kart 7. So Mario Kart and the number 7 walk into a bar. What did you think would happen? The Mario Kart series was always a massive success, but it wasn't until the DS and Wii incarnations that it truly reached worldwide phenomenon status. It seems like nearly everybody played one or the other or both, but with sales numbers like these, you could walk up to anybody on the street and ask why the f*** was Rob in Mario Kart DS? That's not to downplay the success of previous titles, but these hit the big time, and after the release of Mario Kart Wii, it was inevitable that whatever Mario Kart would follow, would also do phenomenally well. This was no longer a series that Nintendo wanted to put out on each of their platforms, this was one they had to. But that's just the thing, we were six mainline Mario Karts in, but really, who was counting? This title's making a lot more sense now. What could Nintendo do for the seventh mainline Mario Kart game to not only get people excited, but also sell them on their shiny new handheld, the Nintendo 3DS? Well, Nintendo did the unthinkable. They made a new Mario Kart game. This is Mario Kart 7, a great title, no doubt, but one I have felt so little desire to go back to throughout the years. It's in this weird space where it's functionally sound, it controls well, it's still incredibly enjoyable but everything it added to the series that were once unique to it either were so whatever or they actually became mainstay elements from there on out, and because of that, I would consistently ask myself, why would I ever play this game again? Well, that's a testament to how good this game truly was at the time. It introduced so many new features that became mainstay elements of the series from that point forward. But outside of those few new features, this game just doesn't really have a core identity of its own in terms of how it feels, how it sounds, how it looks. This is a game that, in my opinion, felt like just another Mario Kart more so than any other entry in the series. I'm sorry I had to say that. I really hope any future employer doesn't look that quote up. I mean, just look at the cover art. It just feels like more of the same from DS and Wii. They just looked at these games, said, all right, this works, third time's the charm. That's sort of indicative of my problem with Mario Kart 7, but we'll get to that when we get to that. First off, we must visit the year 2010. Such a fun year, so much happened. Mario Kart 7 got announced. The Nintendo 3DS was fully unveiled at E3 alongside some early peeks at games in development. Basically just quick glimpses of titles to come. Most didn't have a final name yet, it was mainly stuff like Paper Mario 3DS and Animal Crossing 3DS. But right alongside those titles was Mario Kart 3DS, Mario Kart 7's maiden name. The game was only a few months into development at this point, but a core feature some journalists noted at the event was that the game featured glaring. Remember when I said 7 introduced features that I couldn't imagine the franchise without? Not much else was really there. It was just a smooth Mario Kart demo in glasses-free 3D thanks to the 3DS screen, but other than that, it wasn't much to write home about. In the background, development was going a bit slower than many would have expected. Only a handful of people were actively working on the game, while others who would have if they had time were busy going to town on Nintendogs plus Cats, also known as priorities. So around December of 2010, Nintendo enlisted the help of Retro Studios to assist in the game. They just finished up Donkey Kong Country Returns, they were obviously the most qualified for Mario Kart, so they had to help out Nintendo with developing a Donkey Kong themed track for the game. Because God forbid Nintendo does it themselves. And they were to develop the retro tracks in the game. I feel like they were only picked because of their name. Now, retro is one of Nintendo's best subsidiaries, responsible for Metroid Prime and the modern Donkey Kong Country titles. I was surprised when it was revealed they helped out with this game because I don't automatically equate the creators of this to this, but hey, it's whatever, I ate it up. E3 2011 came around, and so did a new trailer for Mario Kart 3DS confirming a holiday release and the three major gimmicks of the game, gliding, underwater tracks, and cart customization. Cart customization in this trailer boiled down to, you can get big wheels now. Gliding and underwater sections seem to be interesting ways to spice up the track design, and the game itself looked pretty alright, kind of a mix between Mario Kart DS and Wii in terms of graphical quality. But we still didn't have an official name for it yet, Nintendo kept referring to it as just Mario Kart or Mario Kart 3DS. Oh, just you wait, because a quick two months after E3, the final title was revealed, I think. I was expecting it to just be called Mario Kart 3DS or Mario Kart 3D. Keep in mind, Mario Kart names have never been good. Those actually were just named after the system they were on, so it was a bit of a shocker to see them whip out math on us. So if I had to guess why they did this, I'd say it's because calling it Mario Kart 3DS or Mario Kart 3D may have made it seem like a re-release or remake of Mario Kart DS or any other previous Mario Kart, but in 3D this time. It's strange that this was where they drew the line and started numbering the games, but hey, it's hard to get confused by this title. It's just, I worry that some consumers refuse to play this on the basis they never played Mario Kart 2 through 6. There was a temporary logo used for a few months that I kinda like more than the final one. A few more trailers released showcasing new items, courses, and characters until Mario Kart 7 finally released on December 4th, 2011. 
The Nintendo 3DS had a pretty rough start after it launched earlier that year in March, but thanks to a price cut in Mario Kart 7 and Super Mario 3D Land releasing that holiday, it experienced a little something I like to call success. 3D Land was generally considered the more innovative game, I guess, while well, Mario Kart was more of a safe bet. You knew exactly what you were getting into with this one. But if it wasn't for these two games, We'd also be alive, they're video games, not shelter. So that's the history of the world from 2010 to 2011, i.e. Mario Kart 7's build up to release. I wasn't super excited for this, I just had feelings of, oh great, I can play Mario Kart on my 3DS when this comes out, and not much more than that. I may have just had fatigue from the series at the time. It just felt like, this is Mario Kart and it will be good. But keep in mind, Mario Kart Wii was only three years old and we were not on the best of terms, so I sold it to pay for seven, and here we are with me going back to Mario Kart Wii saying, I'm sorry and realizing it was actually actually pretty good after not playing 7 for over 6 years. I picked this game up fairly quickly after launch. I played it, I enjoyed it, I have nothing else to say. Well, let's see why I have nothing else to say. This is Mario Kart 7. Mario Kart 7! Who would have thought this would be the game's title screen? Moving into single player. This is exactly what I was expecting. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Seven feels so... Been there, done that. Like, look at all the new modes. There are none. On top of that, the presentation is just so sterile. It looks fine, but it has none of its own personality. That may sound like an odd argument to make for a Mario Kart game, but looking back at each game in the series, while many are incredibly similar, each one has at least a few things that give them their own unique flair. And first impressions of Seven, it doesn't really have that. In fact, the menu music here is nearly identical to Mario Kart Wii's. Moving on to characters, now I've already unlocked all of them here, which means, hell yeah, I don't have to waste time unlocking characters in Mario Kart 7. What am I gonna do with all this free time? Not unlock characters in Mario Kart 7. The stuff you had to do to unlock these characters wasn't anything dreadful like it was with Mario Kart Wii, for example. Unlocking all characters in that game is some people's major. Here it's as simple as winning a cup in 150cc. Each one will unlock a specific character, and being all of them in any difficulty nets you a me. Okay, thank you. That's much easier. But it's a little lame. I kind of want there to be a balance between f this fucking shit, f f f and this is a little too easy. Like, have me do a bit more than just beat all the cups. Give me a reason to play through the other modes, beat a few time trials, that sort of thing. Well, onto the roster. We have that lovable cast we've all come to know and love over the past 20 odd years. The characters that make Mario Kart, Mario Kart. There's a lot of fucking bees in this one. All right, we have the mainstays here. Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, Peach, Bowser, Donkey Kong, Toad, Koopa, Troopa, Daisy, Wario, Rosalina, the meat. It's a very cozy police lineup. But then we have the newcomers. Shy guy makes his debut as just a straight up playable character. You could use him when playing multiplayer in Mario Kart DS with friends who didn't own the game, but here, if you paid for Mario Kart 7, you get the right to Shy Guy. Lakitu, the character who is fundamentally the flag girl of Mario Kart, makes his playable debut, which I like. It's cool to see him actually playable after being a staple in the series for so long. Metal Mario, you know, Metal Mario, Metal Mario. It's Mario made of metal, making his debut in Super Mario 64 as a power-up. Here he's portrayed as some sort of robotic version of Mario, which is strange. This may be a reference to Metal Mario in the Smash Brothers series, where he's an opponent near the end of some single player modes. Or Mario Golf, I don't fucking know. This is a case of Metal Mario is technically a Mario character and all we have to do is take Mario and make him gray. I'll give them a pass this one time, but they better clean up their act for the next game. I shouldn't have said that. Wiggler, ever wanted to drive as a caterpillar? Don't lie. I'm cool with Wiggler here. This is a dumb addition, I like it. And this one hits home for me. To all the Mario Galaxy fans out there, it finally happened. Giant B. Honey Queen is her final character, and my god, why? Out of all Mario characters who haven't been in Mario Kart, hell, Mario Galaxy characters, why this one? That's like if I had to make a racing game based on my life and for the final playable character, I picked this tree that's 20 feet away from me. I mean, sure, this doesn't offend me. I just have more questions than answers at this point. And that goes for the entire roster as a whole. They did the unthinkable. Wario. Unlockable? Plus, there are a few characters that didn't come back, like Waluigi. Waluigi Pinball from Mario Kart DS Returns, but not him. So I remember hearing this thing where the developers said Waluigi wasn't included because he was too creepy. What are you talking about? But now looking into it, apparently it was simply due to time constraints. I mean, I don't need Waluigi. He's not shelter. But that still doesn't explain the oddball roster we have here. I'll give it some slack. Handheld Mario Karts generally don't have a ginormous list of playable characters, but the playable characters they picked this time around or very questionable. Oh, I have nothing better to do, so might as well hit next. On to the vehicle customization, something I was really interested in. You can change up your cart's body, wheels, and glider, that's it. It's cool we have a lot more options now, but sadly, I don't feel like this is as great as I wanted it to be when it was revealed. Like, yeah, it's kind of fun to mix and match everything up, but overall, when I look back at something like Mario Kart Wii, 
that was a lot simpler. It was just pick a cart, go. Here, I have to meticulously pick out what kind of wheels I want when to be honest, it really doesn't matter. The main thing I think most will change up consistently is the cart's body, the wheels and glider, and when you find one you like, you just stick to that forever. Customization here doesn't make me feel more connected to the cart I create. The only time I can truly feel like, oh yeah, I made this monstrosity, is when I put big wheels on it. This is fundamentally the only time I ever feel like I made this. It's weird they didn't bring back the emblem creator from Mario Kart DS. That would have fit perfectly with being able to put together your own vehicle. Customization's a cool idea, and it's fine, it works. I just don't feel an overwhelming sense of freedom or uniqueness with the cart I put together. I end up looking back at the simpler times and realizing this isn't much different or better. Well, let's hop into the first cup. And... It's f***ing Mario Kart again! This is one of the most Mario Kart feeling Mario Karts I've ever played. There's really no surprises here. It's not like the older ones where you go back to them and go, wow, this controls a lot differently compared to the newer ones. Mario Kart 7 feels exactly how you'd expect it to. It runs great, and in my opinion, it looks sharper than we did. Sure, the character models may be kinda blocky, but it's still four score and seven leagues better than DS. Speaking of DS, we have the return of the map on the bottom screen. It really does feel like the best of DS and Wii in terms of looks and features. But with the core racing, Seven introduces gliding and underwater racing, which I think are fine new additions. You don't have to think about them at all. If you drive up to a ramp that you can glide off of, your glider automatically appears, and now you can weasel your way through the air. Underwater isn't all too much different from normal racing, just obviously things are slower and physics are more floaty. However, it's really interesting to me that what used to be considered a no-no throughout the entirety of Mario Kart, that being these giant craters of water, are now considered integral parts of the track. You want to go through these now. Even the returning older tracks that considered water out of bounds areas have been updated to make them traversable now. Both of these elements help deliver more uniquely designed tracks and keeps you on your toes to the point where it's sorta of hard to imagine Mario Kart without them. But I've been really trying to be more shallow lately, so f these things, I'm only here for the 3D effect. Crank that slider up and experience vision impairment you won't regret. The 3D looks great in this game, giving the courses so much more depth and liveliness. However, it in absolutely no way enhances your gameplay. You don't gain anything for turning the 3D on or off. It's just a good effect that has no bearing on gameplay. But what if you wanted it to? You ever look at all the buttons on the 3DS and wonder, what's this one for? Let's hit up and find out, oh my god! So this is what a BC's driving. Mario Kart 7 features a first person view option alongside motion controls. Hit up and you can twist and turn your system to steer. It's an option. But see, I've used a steering wheel or two in my day and this just doesn't cut it. I'm no idiot, this doesn't feel like driving. They've thought of everything. An officially licensed Mario Kart 7 wheel for the original 3DS! Do my eyes deceive me? I'd be concerned if they did. It is a shell to pop your 3DS into so you can get more comfortable wheel action. This is obviously trying to cash in on the Wii wheel craze that happened with Mario Kart Wii, except with that game, it felt like a natural steering wheel. Here, it feels like a 3DS. Doesn't do much for me in Mario Kart, works pretty well in Brain Age 2. Item-wise, this game has it all. It has no fake item box. Yeah, the item roster in this one feels a bit more stripped down than usual. No fake item box, none of the new additions to Mario Kart Wii return, but hey, we have three new items here, starting off with the Super Leaf. 2011 was a big tail-heavy year. Seven released nearby to Super Mario 3D Land, where that game's primary innovation was pandering. It brought back the Super Leaf from Mario 3, so of course Mario Kart got infected with it. Your cart grows a tail. Finally. You have the power-up for what feels like 30 seconds and just keeps spamming the button to spin it. You can deflect projectiles, hit other racers, in theory it's a nice power-up, but I always feel like I get it at the worst times when it's pretty much completely useless. Yes, I'm all by myself and have nothing to do but go on this straight away, thank god I have a tail to keep me company. You can use it while gliding to keep yourself in the air for a bit, but even you can come up with positives for Satan. I like the color red, and the tail keeps you in the air longer, doesn't mean I like either one of these. The Fire Flower, honestly it's surprising this hadn't become an item before this. And now technically fireballs were Mario and Luigi's special item in Double Dash, but here, we're a Fire Flower family. You get to spout out as many fireballs as you can over a short period of time. It's a nice alternative to an item like the triple shells. Here you get faster ammo and more of it at that, but they're less predictable as to where they'll go and they're smaller overall. Not an amazing new item, but a worthwhile addition. And finally, the lucky seven, and no it isn't an item you get when you're in seventh place. Way to rub it in. This gives you seven items at your disposal and you can activate all of them. Just be careful nobody runs into any of them while they're circling around you. See, this is an item that makes you just feel ungodly powerful, but it's difficult to use strategically. I just feel like I have to get rid of all my items immediately. And because of that, I don't ever feel that lucky to get it. I'm just like, <sighs> all right. The unbalancing this time around is all right. 
it's just kind of boring. It just feels like I get nothing but tails and mushrooms. Nothing like a fun evening in Mario Kart 7 getting tails and mushrooms and like three blue shells hit me per race. Oh my god. Overall, I'd say the items in 7 were pretty underwhelming. However, it turns out that movement I was a part of in 2011 actually accomplished something. I don't even care about the coins, I just had a free year. No matter how often they leave, they always find a way back. Coins make their triumphant return. Originally in the series, you'd want to collect them on the track to hit top speed. If you got hit, you'd lose some of them, and here, it's the exact same. Go a bit faster by collecting the coins, lose them when you get hit. It's the circle of life, and here, the more coins you collect gets you new cart parts to unlock. I wish they had like a little shop to spend your coins, because as it is here, you get new cart parts when you hit certain milestones, like, oh, you have 2,000 coins, here you go! I just don't feel that engaged with unlocking cart parts. Well, onto the tracks. First up, we have Toad Circuit. It's exactly what you think it is. Daisy Hills, a very pleasant track with windmills and hot air balloons, it has it all. Cheap Cheap Lagoon, mostly taking place underwater. A uh, wonderful course to realize, wow, gliding is way more fun than this. Shy Guy Bazaar, I like this one. The theme is great, and taking place at night makes it stand out quite well. Moving on to the Flower Cup, Woohoo Loop, a track based on Woohoo Island from Wii Sports Resort. Yes, Nintendo's excuse for not making a new character or franchises for years, their response, what are you talking about? We made a new character, Woohoo Island. It's somewhat odd to have this here, but it makes for a fun track. And it's one of the first times a Mario Kart course doesn't feature laps, rather it's one long track split into three sections. Woohoo Island was legitimately fun to explore and resort. Just as a Mario Kart track, I think its personality is undermined by a lot of the more out there courses, though it's still a fun time. Mario Circuit, you can go in the castle. How do they get work done in here with a driveway inside? Music Park is definitely the star of the show here. Driving on musical instruments that play music when you're on them, this giant section where you're gliding and avoiding proof that God doesn't exist 2011. Rock Rock Mountain! This one's cool because it literally feels like an adventure. There's this section where you're gliding down from crazy high up and you have this sense of freedom you don't usually feel in a Mario Kart track. Then climbing up with boulders coming down, it's nothing crazy, but a cool one. Star Cup Piranha Plant Slide! Ever wonder what sewers look like? Well, you're welcome. Wario Shipyard! Weirdly, one of the more forgettable tracks for me, which is odd considering the theme of a sunken pirate ship is amazing, yet I keep forgetting this one was here. Neo Bowser City, it's a rainy city, good for it. Maka Woohoo, Woohoo Island's back, and this one is also three sections instead of laps and takes place during a sunset. I don't remember many differences between these two. Finally, the Special Cup. DK Jungle was the track Nintendo just couldn't do themselves. Retro helped out with it as it's based on Donkey Kong Country Returns, and honestly, I'm happy they did. This feels straight out of that game, and it's a blast to traverse. Rosalina's Ice World, it happened, didn't it? It's a nice track, that's what it is, and it's Rosalina's all right. Bowser's Castle. Eh, this is a pretty flaccid Bowser's Castle. Nothing memorable, really, it's just kind of there. And finally, of course, we have Rainbow Road, split into three sections like the Woohoo tracks. This is easily one of the best Rainbow Roads of all time. You explore space as a whole, going on planets, the moon. It's easily the most distinct and one of the best in the entire series. Overall, not a bad track selection. I'd say 7 has some very high highs, but also some very forgettable lows. No bad tracks, really. God, sometimes I wake up in a cold sweat remembering how much I forget Rosalina's Ice World. The retro courses this time around are alright as well. Most are welcome comebacks, and it's cool to see these tracks updated to take advantage of gliding and underwater sections. Well, when there's no more tracks to play, we gotta head over to the other modes. Okay, I guess this one. Battle mode, we have Balloon Battle and Coin Runners. They're just okay. At least this time we can very easily change the settings if we want teams, CPUs, all that. I'm bummed that we can't alter the time limit though. Whether that means removing it entirely or extending it at all, it's always locked at two minutes. The battle arenas are all right, three new, three old. Although the core one I always remember playing on was Honeybee Hive. Literally no other courses existed whenever I played online. It would always pick the B one. This game is so pro B it hurts. Speaking of online, it's here, it works. That's really all there is to it. It's pretty much the same as Mario Kart Wii's online, even having the same globe spinning in the the background. You vote for a track, it'll randomly pick one, you play it, moving on. Mario Kart's always been Nintendo's gold standard for online multiplayer. This was like the one game they did online well in, and in Mario Kart 7 it works as well as you'd want it to. The Mario Kart channel from Wii returns here, this time you can just access it all from the menu rather than having to install it on your system, and it's just a way to alter online settings, view stats, race against others' time trials. 7 was actually pretty big for Nintendo in terms of the term, the future is now. They actually had to update the game because some tracks featured unaccounted for exploits that allowed users to finish them in record times. Yes, the only reason they ever updated the game wasn't for adding new courses or modes, it was because some people were having just too much fun with it. Eh. It's a good game. 
Just like any other Mario Kart, it's fun, and this one is obviously better than many others in the franchise, but I felt this one had less to it. The mission mode from DS didn't return, neither did bikes from Mario Kart Wii, the customization isn't super crazy in depth, you can't even play versus races, where you can select any track to play on with CPUs, only time trials are in this one. Sure, gliding and underwater racing are great new additions that help the track design be more interesting. The trick system from Wii returns, and thankfully all you have to do this time is hit the same button as your drift to pull them off. This game is a mishmash of good new additions, lame new additions, and baffling exclusions. But in the end, Mario Kart 7 to me just feels like more of the same. So much of its identity to me is basically it feeling like Mario Kart Wii on the go. But hey, don't take my word for it. Dear God, don't. It's probably wrong.